Hi, and welcome to uh, our second part of iTrack Forms Building 201. Today we will be discussing cause analysis. Uh, we'll be going over creating a cause analysis in the, in the CRM, linking that cause analysis to our pre-existing webinar form type, and then submitting that cause analysis uh, in the portal. The one thing to note is that we'll be going over some of the basics pretty quick. So if you haven't yet, just head over to our YouTube channel and uh, watch iTrack Buildings 101, where we discuss the basics of a form type, uh, some of the complex controls, some of the basic controls, and the verbiage that will be used on uh, during this webinar. And as always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn, on YouTube, or by uh, emailing us at support at iTrack365.com. Now, without further ado, let's begin the webinar. Before we actually get into uh, how to create a cause analysis, I'm going to show you guys a uh, pre-built one with our incident form. Now, pretty clearly here, we have four levels, type of event, immediate direct causes, basic root causes, or areas for corrective actions. Um, four is the standard. You can have five or six, I believe. I don't think there's a limit to it, but four would be um, generally how you set one of these up. If you start at the very top with cause analysis type, we have safety, quality, and environmental. Now, obviously, all three of these will have different uh, levels due to the different nature of the uh, root cause analysis, but this way it saves you from making too many form types, you know, one for safety, one for quality, one for environmental, and it just groups them up uh, very nicely. So we're going to start with safety. We're going to click this little pencil here for type of event. And we see here that it gives us at least one and most 10 items out of the 13 items here. And depending on what we select, I'll just write test or struck against, I'll just write test and test here. Uh, this will actually give us more options to choose from uh, and, the, and the levels deeper down. So we see here that we have you know, substandard acts 1 to 19 and conditions 21 to 40. Um, and if we actually just went back and removed one of these events, like that one, for example, and we go back, you know, we see here that instead of 19, now it's up to 17. So those relationships can be changed in CRM as well. And then you just continue to fill out, uh, you know, the cause analysis as you would, and the rest of the levels will follow suit. So that's a pretty um, basic explanation of how to navigate that. We will be creating our own cause analysis now, and then we'll show you how to submit uh, a cause analysis that you guys have the back end understanding of. So as always, we want to head over um, to our form types area. We want to search for our form type. We want to create a new section. Call it cause analysis webinar demonstration. Hit save. And in the form type field, we're going to create one form type field of cause analysis. Everything else you can just leave defaults. It's pretty standard stuff. The one thing I would change though is making it required to really get the analysis done on the incident hazard ID or whatever it may be. So from there, we're going to go back, make sure it was saved properly. And this little left sidebar here, we're going to scroll down to the other section and select cause analysis types. From there, we're going to click new on the top ribbon. And we're going to call this webinar cause analysis. And as always, once you hit save, we see two new records will show up. The first thing we're going to do, just for the sake of demonstration, is we're going to create some groups. We're going to create group one, hit save, and we're going to hit new cause analysis group again, and hit group two, hit save, go back and make sure that it was saved properly. Uh, once that's finished, we're going to go down to cause analysis levels, hit new cause analysis level, and once you open up the record type, uh, we're going to call this level one just to keep things simple. Uh, we see a couple options here. One of them is minimum selections. We're going to give them, you have to at least select one item. And you know what, just because it's demonstration, we're going to say you have to select only one item by having the minimum, minimum and maximum set to one. Uh, default item is cause. What this means is when you select an item, is this item the root cause of the incident? Uh, obviously, for level one, you want to keep this off as a no. 
Um, but if you want to default any of the items of that level uh, to be associated with the cause, you'll just click the little checkbox and it will uh, label that as the cause in the back end. And would you want to allow actions? Um, we're going to say no for level one again, but you can actually link a form task or a corrective action uh, to the cause analysis level item. So for example, if someone's wearing improper footwear and they slipped, you can have an action associated with that cause analysis saying, you know, clean up the spill um, at this site or, you know, move, remove the tripping hazard. And the order will um, auto populate once you hit save. And the definition, if you want to give, uh, you know, some of your, if you want to give the field workers, the people filling out the form, a bit more information regarding what this level entails, you can just write down, write that down in the definition area. So once that's done, we're going to create a new item. We're going to go cause analysis code. We're going to name it one, and this just puts the number before the uh, the text we're going to write here. And we're going to call the first level item slips and trips. And we're going to put that into group one. We're not saying this is a cause, so we're going to say no, and we're not going to put any instructions beside it. We're going to hit save, go back, Create new again. We're going to label this code two, and we're going to call this struck by. And we're going to put this into group two. All right. So what we've done now is just like in this cause analysis with type of event that would be level one, but I'll show you what it looks like um, in our webinar form type. So once you scroll all the way down, we see we have to actually save it to access the record, but we see that the form type, um, the form type was associated to the cause analysis. Now there is one more step we're going to do, and I'm going to show you if you miss a step, uh, why you're seeing blank. If you hit this little edit button and we get to that type that I mentioned earlier that you can select from safety, quality, environmental, and you see that there's no records found, that just means you missed a step, which is, by going back to the main level of the cause analysis type and we hit the related tab and we go into form type cause analysis types and we select new form type cause analysis. We're actually going to select webinar form type and what this is doing is it's saying in that cause analysis field, please allow the user to select uh, webinar cause analysis um, from this little area. So if you ever do see blank or you see that, you know one of the cause analysis you wanted linked wasn't shown that's how you would fix that error so we hit edit hit type and now we see that that webinar cause analysis was actually populated once we hit that we see only level one shows if we hit edit we see here that group one and group two both have one item inside of them cool next we're going to create level two and this would be um, your immediate direct causes if that's how your uh, your cause analysis is mapped out. We're going to hit new cause analysis level. We're going to call this level two. We're going to say you can choose from one up, up to three out of the four possible selections. We're going to default this item to a cause because this is the last level we'll be creating for the demonstration. And we're going to allow actions because it's the last level. We're going to hit save. We're going to click new cause analysis and we're going to create four new items. For one of them, we're going to call it 1.1 and we are going to call this um, improper um, footwear. We're going to hit save. Go back, create another one. We're going to call this code 2.1 and we're going to call this improper tools. And then hit save. And then we're going to go one more time. We're going to leave the code empty just because it's a generic uh, item, for example. We're going to call it horseplay. Hit save. Go back. And we're going to call the last one um, improper procedures, which can fit into that slips and slips and trips, um, or it can fit into struck by. So we hit save. We go back. We see how level two has four items now. But what we really want to do is, you know, if it's a struck by, your footwear doesn't really matter. 
uh, and if you're slipping, uh, you know, uh, sorry, if you're if you're slipping, the tools you have doesn't really matter. So we're going to associate slips and trips with improper footwear, and we're going to associate struck by with improper tools, and we're going to leave horse play and improper procedures to be um, associated with both levels. So we're going to go back into level one. We're going to select slips and trips. We're going to click this cause analysis relationships. We're going to hit add existing cause analysis and the right bar will open up and we're going to select improper footwear, horseplay and procedures. Hit add. And now they now they exist. So what this means is now when you're filling out that cause analysis level in portal and somebody selects slips and trips and the next level, these are the three items they will see. We're going to go down to struck by and do the same thing. Add existing slips and trips. Oh, sorry. Improper procedures, horseplay, and improper tools. Hit add. And then when somebody selects struck by, they will now see three, these three items. And we have that associated with the code level here. Um, obviously, yours is going to be mapped out uh, a lot, uh, you know, more in depth and more in detail. But just for sake of demonstration, uh, the verbiage is used to sort of help you guys understand what's happening here. So we're going to go back. Everything looks fine here. We're going to go back one more level just to make sure that everything is there. We make sure that the form type cause analysis types are there. All right, so we see that we have one, which is fine. If we go into the cause analysis level items, we have six like we intended, two in level one, four in level two. And if we go to cause analysis levels, we have two levels, which is right, and cause analysis groups, which is correct as well. You just want to make sure that, um, so for an example, if I opened up group one, and I just hit new from this top ribbon and I forget to relate it to the cause analysis type. But you think everything is fine and dandy using this little related tab um, on the right side will help you make sure that everything that you need to put into the, uh, the shell of the cause analysis uh, is filled out correctly. Perfect. So once that's all finished, we think our cause analysis shell is all done. We're going to head back into the portal. We're going to hit refresh just so the saves, uh, the changes can be saved. We're going to scroll all the way back down to cause analysis webinar demonstration. Hit edit. Select the type. And then we're going to select you know, slips and trips. And as always, this becomes required whenever one is selected. And you're actually required to select text as well. Now, the one thing I mentioned is that we will be having a minimum selection of one and a maximum selection of one. So if I hit save and close here, an error will occur and it'll tell us we need to only select one item. So we'll just unselect uh, slips and chips for now. We'll hit save and close. And then we see here that that's working fine. Now if we hit edit on level two, ideally now we see 2.1, which is improper tools, horseplay and improper procedures. And that improper footwear item no longer shows uh, due to the item selected back in level one. Proper tools. Now if we go back to level one and we just unselect struck by and we um, select slips instead, we see here that improper tools is actually unselected because there's no relationship between level one and two there and improper footwear. Um, was filled out instead. So we're going to say you know, wrong shoes, for example. So that's the very, very basic underlying example of how you can set up a cause analysis. Obviously, uh, if we if we go deeper into the one that's in our incident report, and look at the basic root causes. You know, we have uh, almost 40 here, maybe even more than 40 that you can really select. And once you have that mapped out, uh, the eye track system becomes easier and more. Um, intuitive and better analysis for any incident that happens with your company. Now there's one more thing that I do want to show with the cause analysis, which is the um, allow action section that I mentioned earlier. All right, so we select allow actions for level two equals yes. So we're going to head back into our form type section. We're going to go to our form type. We're going to go back to the section we created. We're going to hit new form type field and we're going to call this one form tasks. All right. so 
perform tasks, corrective actions. All right. So from there, we're going to say it's not required. Um, everything else is pretty standard, like I mentioned before. And if we hit save, right, we notice that this form type field display options will now open up. And I went over what form type field options were in 101, but just as a quick uh, re uh, refresher, if we hit new field display option here, we're able to see all the fields that are um, available with this control. So for example, you know, if hours um, don't really match what you want to save with this uh, specific form, we can just hide them from the form, from the grid, and from the report. And if we hit save and go back, and we create a new one, and you know you want it to change. Um, for example, you guys call actual hours, you, know, you call it exact hours, for example. You can change the, the naming of the uh, field as well there. So we'll hit save, we'll go back, everything looks fine here. All right, we'll go back to the form we just created. This is saved fine, we see here in the portal, we have the levels uh, written out. If we hit refresh and we scroll all the way back down, now we see that this form task corrective actions um, area is now selected, is now available, sorry. And if we hit new form task and we call the subject, you know, clean up tripping hazard, we make it a high priority and we change the due date, you know, to today because it's a pretty simple task, right? We scroll down. We want an attachment of the picture of the tripping record, for example. You know, is there a task that came from this task or any tasks that will come from this task, so on. Uh, we can edit all of that in the form task control. And then from there, this related cause item, if we open it and we say, you know, improper footwear. So what this now means, if I hit save and close, we're saying as you fill out the incident form or whatever form type you want to use, we say, you know, there was a slip. It was because of improper footwear, for example. Um, but they can also clean up the tripping hazard that was there, and this is the cause item that relates to it. Now, obviously, uh, it's just an example, and it might not make 100% here, here, but for the sake of demonstration, that's how you can relate a cause item to a uh, form task. I hope this makes sense, and if you guys do have any questions, uh, feel free to email us at support at itrack365.com. Um, send us a message on LinkedIn at iChat365 or find us on YouTube and all the previous uh, videos will be in the description of this video once it goes live. Thank you and have a great day.